Well, it is no longer a matter of opinion. An empirical scientific analysis has found that Donald Trump is suffering from cognitive decline. Whether he can't be president, whether you like it, whether Biden is also suffering, those are all fair questions. But we now have the data Trump's brain has declined. The 2024 election is a week away, and both age and cognitive ability play a major role this election cycle. This was going to be an election between 81 year old Joe Biden and 78 year old Donald Trump in an environment where the American people said they were craving younger leadership. Following a disastrous debate performance in June, where he seemed tired and confused, losing his train of thought, Joe Biden ultimately stepped aside with the now 60 year old Kamala Harris replacing him as the Democratic nominee. Now, with Biden no longer in the race, we have Kamala Harris facing the oldest major party presidential nominee in American history. That's Donald Trump, who has been experiencing very obvious cognitive decline, something that we've been following on the show for years, but has really only been recently receiving the attention it deserves from the corporate news media. The reality is that some level of cognitive decline is quite common in people into their 70s and 80s. So it's not a surprise that we would witness it in political candidates who happen to be that old. However, it's often what is called subclinical, often not materially relevant to one's ability to make decisions or to reason appropriately. But much of this is just conjecture. It's our instinct when we watch or listen to Trump and something a little more quantitative would be nice. And that's what we now have. Researchers have quantified the cognitive performances of Biden, Harris and Trump through an analysis of what they've said during debates over the last few years. This is very interesting. Researchers affiliated with the University of Southern California did a study on cognitive performance and linguistic analysis. And what they did is use an advanced language model named Claude Opus 3.5 to identify and analyze the linguistic markers of the different candidates. Now, I'll say a little more later about non linguistic analyses about cognitive decline, but one very powerful tool in evaluating cognitive decline is how people speak and, and more importantly, how their speech has changed over time. What the researchers did is identify seven key linguistic markers that can potentially signal cognitive decline, and these include lexical diversity, which just means how varied are the words that you use when you speak, syntactic complexity, meaning how sophisticated is your sentence structure, mean sentence, sentence length, that just means on average how many words are in your sentences. And they looked at the use of complex clausal structures. That means sentences that have multiple clauses or ideas in them. And the study looked at the frequency of semantically imprecise lexemes or words that lack clear meaning. You use a word and it's not really clear what you mean by it, as well as the repetition of lexical items or phrases, which when you repeat the same thing over and over again, when you speak and when you increasingly do that over time, it suggests that you're struggling to express your thoughts and kind of filling it with some small number of words you're comfortable with. And finally, the study looked at the prevalence of grammatical aberrations or errors in grammar as well. So this was evaluated over time. And the idea was let's get some insight over the cognitive functioning, not at one point in time, but as something that changes ebbs and flows over time. The researchers did this by using transcripts of presidential and vice presidential debates over the last five years. What was the reason to do this? Well, if you're looking at teleprompter speeches, you're not getting a natural reflection of how one speaks the vocabulary they use, et cetera, because they're just reading a prepared speech. It wouldn't really give us information. So the idea here was let's look at the recent Trump Biden debate and their 2020 debates. Let's look at the Harris Trump debate. Let's look at pivotal debates from previous election cycles. And with this unscripted 
vocabulary and linguistic analysis, we can get a sense of what is the natural pattern and the way that speech has changed over time. Once the transcripts were collected, the analysis began to try to reduce bias. The transcripts were anonymized, so it wasn't, hey, analyze this Trump transcript. The idea was let's do an objective evaluation by anonymizing the transcripts. The candidates performances were analyzed using this language model. Each candidate was scored on the linguistic markers that I mentioned. Scores went from one to 100, and this was done multiple times to ensure reliability. The results were averaged to try to minimize outliers and discrepancies. And interestingly, the study found only minor score differences between runs. So there was like a consistent reproducibility here. So let's now get to the revelations. Revelation number one is that it is true that Joe Biden, now 81 years old, showed notable decline in performance from 2012 to 2020 with a decrease in 6.5 percent per year. Uh, I'm sorry, 6.5 percent total, about 0.8 percent per year in linguistic performance. This was visible to the naked eye. Right. I've said many times, watch Biden's debate against Paul Ryan back in 2012. Watch Biden's debates against Trump in 2020 and watch Biden's debate against Trump in 2024. Notable. And the analysis of the language found the same thing. Now, even more concerning, Biden's rate of decline appeared to accelerate from 2020 to 2024 with a decrease of 22 percent, about six percent per year during that period. So what this suggests is that there was something to the concerns about Biden and cognition and that it arguably made a lot of sense to replace Biden uh, with someone younger at the top of the ticket. So that's Biden. Let's now go to Trump. Trump who remains in the race at age 78, the oldest major party nominee for president in the history of the United States, Trump displayed steady decline from 2016 until 2024. OK, his performance declined six percent from 16 to 20. That's about one point four percent per year, more than Biden. And from 2020 to 2024, about 2.2 percent per year. So there's been an acceleration in Trump's decline, including just over the last four months where Trump's score dropped 10 percent in just a few months. This is massive. And again, what's fascinating about this is that even though most of us aren't linguists, cunning or otherwise amateur, right? Cunning linguist, amateur linguist, well, none of us, most of us are not linguists just by listening to Trump. We notice, especially lately, that something is wrong. And the linguistic analysis done with this language uh, uh, model uh, found that indeed Trump has been declining and he's been declining more uh, acutely, precipitously over the last several months. The analysis also found that Trump's linguistic efficacy was lower to begin with, meaning Trump started off in a worse state, whereas Biden used to have a score of nearly 600. Trump started around 400. So Trump at some core level has a diminished linguistic ability. And this is why we we end up saying that he speaks at a fourth grade level during speeches. So Trump's decline more rapid than Biden's ending at a lower point and starting at a more diminished value. Now, let's be thorough. And we'll also talk about Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris is 60 years old. She's notably younger than the other two. And maybe not surprisingly, Harris had the most stability among the three candidates and the least decline. Kamala Harris showed such minor decline that it could actually just be sort of statistical noise. Harris's uh, linguistic scoring declined 0.4 percent per year since 2020. And that could be reflective more of even cultural expectations of how candidates speak rather than any material decline. And I'll tell you what I mean by that. Over the last four years, political discourse has coarsened and the standards and expectations of how our elected officials will speak has degraded. 
And so when you see such a small decline in Harris, it might just reflect that culturally we now expect candidates to talk a certain way. It's such a small amount. So bottom line, we can show you the trend lines now. And as you can see, Kamala Harris has effectively no change. Biden and Trump have both experienced notable declines in linguistic abilities. Now, let me give you the caveats and the limits of this analysis. These figures are valuable insights, but we should approach them with some caution because the scores that we get from this linguistic analysis, number one, are estimates. They stem from large language model assessments which have limitations in precision. There's no doubt about it. This study focused on communication ability. That's only one aspect of cognitive decline. Cognitive decline can also manifest in other ways. Memory function, executive control, the speed of information processing. We th those would be other analyses. Anecdotally, we see Trump having major issues with memory. And you could imagine a situation where someone's communication abilities and verbal abilities might decline, but it might not reflect a decline cognitively. It often does, but it wouldn't necessarily. You could have some kind of issue which affects speech, but not cognition. The criticisms that Joe Biden received for his 2024 debate performance went beyond speaking ability. They had to do with energy. They had to do with that constant coughing into his hand sounding tired, the gaze that he sometimes had. So there are there's no doubt that there are other things here. But one aspect of this is very clear. If you are someone who didn't want to vote for Biden because you were concerned about his age and you were concerned about his cognitive ability, you should be equally, if not more concerned about Donald Trump's cognitive ability. And there is now only one candidate in the race who has proven herself to be cognitively up to the task at hand. Her name is Kamala Harris. So now I'm ready. Tell me all the reasons why the analysis is right when it comes to Biden, but wrong with Trump. I'm ready for the maggots and the Magapotamians and the Magadonians to explain it all to me. Read the analysis. We're linking to the study. Look through it and then be specific. You know, th this reminds me I'm anticipating that this will be like when I did my segment about how the stock market does better under Democrats, inflation's lower, job creation higher, GDP growth higher. And people just write to me and they go, you must be blind to think that that's the case. It's not really an argument. Maybe try presenting some data. Give me some empirical analysis of what I'm saying. So I'm ready for the non empirical reactions to what I'm telling you here today. Maybe this impacts your vote. Maybe it doesn't. But there is no doubt that we now have a significant cognitive difference between Trump and Kamala Harris. From Saudi blood money to shady crypto schemes, we shouldn't overlook any of Trump's scandals. Trump barely understands the concept of crypto himself in the past, having called it a scam. And now Trump conveniently found his way into one of the least regulated markets on the planet. Using the platform Ground News, I can see even Fox News isn't sold on this. Their headline says Trump crypto venture unveiling stirs skepticism. Our longtime sponsor Ground News compiles news sources for each story into one place so you can make up your own mind instead of being limited by the loudest and most biased opinions around you. Ground News breaks down the ownership and biases influencing each source's reporting so you can sort out for yourself what the truth is. So while Trump's fans keep rallying around the idea that he's a self-made billionaire with America's best interests at heart, you can follow Trump on Ground News and see all the ways that his family exploits public office for personal gain. Go to ground.news slash Pacman now to get 40% off of the same unlimited access vantage plan that I use. The link is in the description.